This trick has been around for a long time, but I knew it as Daryl's dream card, otherwise known as untouched. You would think a trick was based on me with a title like that, right? <laughs> the point of this trick is that you could have a, a shuffle deck and you uh, do not touch the cards, and yet you still come to a very nice conclusion. So on today's video, we're going in raw, baby, and I'm gonna show you a little bit of a variation of this classic trick, which has had a very substantial history. So in my attempts to look this trick up, it's been done by everyone. Carl Fulves, it's in Scarney and Card Trick. Daryl had a variation called Untouched. It's all the same thing. You're gonna have a deck of cards shuffled by uh, a spectator as best they can. And you're gonna have them spread the cards towards you because you don't wanna touch them. So you're gonna have them spread towards you like this. And what you're doing is that you're looking at the top two cards. So as they're spreading these cards, you're gonna make sure that they first of all sanitize their hand because most lay people that wanna see magic tricks are definitely not sanitized. So you wanna do that and then you're gonna have them spread the cards out. Now what you're looking for is the card that's gonna match in value in terms of the first card being the value and the second card being the suit. So here we have a six of spades and an eight of clubs. So together, these cards would be, that's right, the six of clubs. You're a smart one. You're a smart cookie, aren't you? So when the spectator's spreading this deck out to you, what you're looking for is the six of clubs. This is gonna be your prediction card. So you're not gonna show this to them, but you're gonna take this card out and put it aside as your prediction. Now at this point, you're gonna have the spectator deal the cards in a pile. Now here you're gonna add a wonderful subtlety that I first saw done by Paul Curry in his Worlds Beyond book. The moment they deal those first two cards down, you're gonna say, as a matter of fact, you could shuffle the cards as you deal. You don't have to keep them in the same order. You could shuffle them and deal them on the table as best you want, or you could even deal them from the top, from the middle, or from the bottom. And of course, the spectator is gonna be dealing, and you could tell them to stop wherever it is they want. So at this point, they've stopped, and you have exactly the conditions you need for this trick, which is those two cards on the bottom of the deck. Now, ordinarily, what will happen here is that you instruct the spectator to deal the cards into two piles like this back and forth. However, you've given them so much choice up to now, it doesn't make sense why at this point you would want them to be so strict when it comes to dealing the cards into two particular piles. And of course, the trick would be at this point that you would say, we're gonna use the value of one of these cards and the suit of the other to come up with one card. So you would use the value, in this case, of the six and the suit of this one, which would be the club, and that would come to a nice conclusion that matches your prediction and you didn't touch the cards whatsoever. However, this is why I have an issue with this particular trick. Because remember, you have the cards that have been dealt on the table by the participant, which were dealt essentially from anywhere they want and they dealt however many cards they want. So now, why do you have to have them deal back and forth? And I've realized in my infinite virginity that it doesn't matter. Now, if you're confused, of course, by any of this, I suggest for you to check out the Pig Cake Magic Academy with $5 a month gets you two videos every single week going over card coin stuff. You have access to over 800 videos already with everything, everything included. The moment you sign up, that's right. The moment you sign up, you get access to exclusive tutorials that I don't post anywhere else. Check it out. The link is in the description below. Oh boy. So at this point, you're going to have the spectator deal the cards into two piles, but you could say you could deal them however it is that you want as long as they're one card at a time. So that way you have a choice as to which cards go in whatever pile you want. So they don't have to deal back and forth. They can deal the cards however it is that they want. Now here, you're gonna be left in a couple different scenarios. Either the spectator deals the cards onto the piles exactly as you would have said in the beginning. They would have dealt the cards, in this case, one on each pile. One thing to note, by the way, is you wanna keep track of where that last card goes because wherever that last card goes, that's gonna be the value. So you wanna say this card's gonna be the value, this card's gonna be the suit, but that's gonna be later on. So you're gonna be left in a couple of different scenarios here. Either you're left with the cards on either pile or you're gonna be left with both cards on the same pile, either this one or this one. And either way, you're gonna be left in the same exact situation as you're gonna see in a moment. Now, what you're gonna do in case the spectator happens to deal the last two cards into the same pile is you're gonna say, now what I want you to do is do me a favor and pick up whichever pile you want. Now, if the spectator happens to pick up this pile, 
that's fine. It doesn't matter because you're going to say, and I want you to pick up this pile and put it on top of the pile in your hand. And guess what, baby? You're left with the two cards on top of the deck that need to be on top of the deck. Now, let's say the spectator does the opposite of that and they pick up this pile. Well, guess what? All you need to do is say and put it on top of the remaining pile on the table and you're left in the exact same situation where now you have a card that's going to represent the value and the next card that's going to represent the suit. Now, of course, if they've dealt both cards on both piles, you just proceed as normal, as I mentioned earlier, where you say one of these cards is going to correlate to this to the value. In this case, this one and the other one is going to correlate to the suit. Now, very important. The reason why you want to keep track of where the last card dealt is because that's going to be the value card and you want to mention it before you actually turn the cards over. You don't want to turn the card over and go, this is going to represent the value. What you want to say is. This card right here is going to represent the value because that way I don't know what the card is. So therefore, I don't have any control as to what card it could potentially be. So now at this point, before I turn it over, I notice which card is dealt last and I go, this card is going to represent the value. In this case, we're going to use both these cards to make one card up. This one's going to represent the value, which happens to be a six. Now this card is going to, of course, represent the suit, which could be anything from clubs, heart, spade or diamond. And in this case, we have a club. So in this case, we've made one card up, sir, which is the six of clubs. I want to remind you, you've shuffled the deck, you've mixed it. I never touched it. And of course, the prediction matches perfectly fine each and every single time. What a hot one. What a hot little trick here. It's a variation on that classic plot. Apparently, it's been everywhere. So you have Daryl with his touch on it. Carl Fulby's, as I mentioned earlier, Scarney. They've all had different variations on this if you want to get virgin-y. But case in point, what you're doing is that you're having the spectator shuffle the cards and you're combining two cards to make just one, which is going to be the one to match your prediction. It's definitely a fun trick, and it's one of those bad boys that uh, you could do with a, a shuffle deck without much work. And uh, first time I saw it was direct. Daryl, which is, uh, of course, in direct connection to the previous video that I made, which is Pick Cakes Pick on Daryl, just to give you a little bit of a taste as to what you could expect with his material, which is very easy to do, very easy to follow, yet very impactful. Just perform this on anyone and you're going to see that they're going to remember you for a long, long time. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to purchase the merch if you want. The link is going to be in the description below, as is the link to the Pig Cake Magic Academy. Rave reviews all around. People saying, hey man, you really undervalue what you're doing here. And I go, no, no. I put it at a bargain. I put it at a bargain. So check it out. And uh, well, that's going to be the end of the video here. Don't really know what else to say at the tail end of this video. Um, I found a cockroach on the floor this morning and I rearranged my entire living quarters because of it. Um, its position was very... It's too close for comfort, and uh, I saw it climbing the curtain, so I made sure that I raised the curtains up. You can't see it here in the background, uh, but I raised the curtains up so that the cockroach can't climb. And I'm very clean, I'm very neat, almost to the point where people might think that I'm uh, a little bit sus. But, uh, you know, you got to do what you do.